Hi, thanks for stopping by again. It's another sunny day here in Virginia, but uh, we'll do the best we can to, uh, to get this uh, on, and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Um, last week, I talked about my great-great-great-grandfather, Thomas Hilliard, and uh, today I'd like to talk about actually his son, Thomas Alma Hilliard, who is my great-great-grandfather, and I uh, just wanted to tell you a little bit about him. This is, uh, let me get this so we won't get the glare on there, find a way, there we go. Um, that looks pretty good. That's about the best we're going to get. This is Thomas Alma Hilliard. He uh, actually went by Alma. And uh, we know that uh, basically he was settled into the uh, Cache Valley area. Uh, he came with his parents uh, across uh, the, the sea and, uh, of course, born in England and uh, settled in the Cache Valley area. Um, so I would like to tell you a little bit about him. Um, kind of an interesting story, but uh, really a man of uh, honor and conviction, and that's kind of what I wanted to share some of that uh, with you about. Um, as he was growing up, of course, uh, there wasn't a lot of educational opportunities uh, back then, and um, in pioneering time, being the oldest of all of uh, uh, the siblings, he had uh, a responsibility around the, the house and the farm, and uh, with his father being gone a lot for uh, church and uh, uh, work responsibilities, he shouldered a lot of the burden uh, as, a, as a young man. Um, he married Lucinda Jane Merrill in January of 1875 in the Salt Lake Endowment House. Uh, he had just passed his 21st birthday, and uh, the story goes that there was another young couple who joined them on their trip down to Salt Lake, James Kirkbride and Lucinda Gibson who also were going down to Salt Lake to be married. Now, in order to get there, they drove from uh, Cache Valley down to Salt Lake in a covered wagon with a span of horses. Uh, the trip was very slow, but they report that it was very enjoyable, uh, even though it was in the midst of winter, okay, January of 1875. Uh, in telling the story later on, and I, I'm getting a lot of these notes from, I believe, was his grandson, uh, Alma's uh, grandson says that uh, Alma boasted of having a $20 gold piece with him to pay for their expenses. Uh, paying for a wedding and the trip and everything for 20 bucks, things have changed a lot since uh, that time. Um, Lucinda uh, was the daughter of Ira and Jane Merrill. Um, and you might remember back uh, several weeks ago, I talked about Ira Merrill, uh, who was being attacked by Indians as they were preparing for a 24th of July celebration, um, and he was killed uh, in Smithfield uh, during one of those Indian attacks, and is recognized as the first white man buried in Smithfield Cemetery. Well, that was, uh, that was Lucinda's father uh, there. Um, they spent their early part of their marriage in a rented house. Uh, but Alma didn't like that. He wanted a place of his own. And so using homestead rights, they were actually able uh, to locate a place of their own and build up some equity in there and uh, did everything he could to be self-supporting. Um, when they were first married, it was quite a trek to get down to the creek for water, and uh, he realized that he needed to do something better if he wanted to support his family. And uh, he did look for, uh, for better opportunities. Uh, says. Um, there was also, uh, as time went on, he was continually looking to how he could upgrade himself and uh, the, the situation of his family. And at one time, uh, it says that uh, uh, two miles north of Smith Smithfield, there was a, a small farm uh, owned by Mr. Loveland and uh, it was offered for sale. And um, so he was able to, to procure that, uh, that farm and uh, worked earnestly. Uh, it said Alma's uh, chief motives in life was if it's worth doing, uh, it's worth doing well. And uh, this characterized his interest in the farm. He took his own boys and had them take his place uh, below, near, uh, next to his side, trained them in, uh, in farming and uh, in honest labor. Uh, and uh, it says they were conservative in their financial ventures. And after commitments were made and business obligations, they were to recognize this obligation and never try to sidestep their responsibility. So he taught them, uh, you know, how to how to be uh, men of honor. 
um, his, his policy, it says, for farming was first proper preparation of the land for seed. And then he made sure that the best seeds were used in the planting. And uh, he did all the irrigation, the weeding, cultivation as required, and uh, did very well. Um, co-laborers along with him, one of them is listed by the name of Royal Tidwell. And uh, Royal Tidwell, uh, his daughter, would then marry uh, Wyman Hilliard, and uh, they are my great-grandparents. Um, uh, sorry, I uh, lost my notes here real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, now, at one point, there, Alma realized that there was a land adjacent to his that would be perfect, and it's a place called Crow Mountain up there in the Smithfield area. And it would have a great value if it was connected to his present farm. So what he did is he convinced Lucinda to uh, file homestead rights on the property, uh, which she did. Um, now, in order to uh, file homestead rights, you have to build a one-room log house on the property, and it has to be occupied at least three months during each of the three years uh, that you are working to gain the title. And so that's what they did. They built a small little place, and over time, uh, by the time that the title was acquired, uh, that land contained sheds, corrals, chicken coop, and animals uh, for each of the facilities were all set up. Uh, a suitable cellar was prepared for fruit, vegetables, and all those kind of things. But actually, uh, at one point, there was a major storm that hit the Smithfield uh, area. And following that storm, heavy water rushed down the hillside, passed through the cellar, and washed out all of the articles that they had stored in that cellar, uh, to include, as they pointed out, a sack of sugar, which I'm sure was probably a, a major blow to them. We wouldn't think much about it today, but back in those days, we're talking pioneer times, having a sack of sugar lost was a real calamity. Um, all the chickens were killed that were in the chicken coops. And, uh, but the, the point that they bring out here, it says, Alma forgot about this time. This unfortunate experience was forgotten as it brought a reward of the efforts that were made in securing the property. And they worked very hard uh, to make it a very good farm. Uh, the cows, a uh, good herd of milk cows uh, from which the milk and butter was provided. Surplus was separated and sold as cream, which he got from 10 to 13 cents a pound uh, for the butter that they had. Chickens provided eggs and poultry meat. Uh, they even grew turkeys, or raised turkeys, uh, which became a real novelty for all the young people that went to visit that farm. Sheep were also there, providing uh, meat as well as wool. And they says that the biggest turkey was al always saved for the Hilliards Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, kind of interesting. His horses were considered to be some of the best in the valley. And uh, it says he had a thrasher uh, that he would either hook up the horses or a team of mules and uh, uh, says that uh, when he had a, uh, a iron tired wagon, and as he became more prosperous, he actually purchased a white top buggy, which was considered quite a luxury in those days. Um, Alma prided himself on making sure all of his financial obligations were, were taken care of, not only to the local businesses, but also to the church. Um, whenever there was a special assessment that was required, uh, Alma was always there to help support, uh, generous in helping the needy, whether in kind or in substance. It says uh, in one of the notes I found interesting, he arranged with the local bishop there that when people would turn in supplies for their tithing, anything that was not needed or that was uh, in, in overage or in excess, uh, Alma would buy from the bishop, and then he would use it in his farm, and then the bishop would then have that money that he could then use if, oh, oh, if there were extra things. I thought that was uh, quite ingenious. Um, uh, says he also uh, spent a lot of time working on the Logan Temple. Uh, we know his dad was a, uh, a fine uh, carpenter. I don't know, no mention on what Alma's uh, skills were, but it did say that he took a great pride in working on the Logan Temple. Um, it says uh, he took stock in uh, a lot of different uh, business ventures that came along. And I'm going to read the quote here. It says, 
In some instances, the venture was profitable. In other times, it was merely an experience. And I thought that's a good attitude to have. Uh, you're either successful or you're gaining experience. That's, that's pretty good. Um, uh, it says that even though he was very busy with life on the farm, uh, Alma was always one who enjoyed sports of all kind, baseball, horse racing, gun clubs, and his specialty was hunting. He hunted uh, the uh, fowl and, uh, as well as in the hills, um, deer, elk, and even bear. Uh, hunting for bear was just not a pastime for him. It says he actually salvaged the parts of the animal for practical use. Be interested to find out what, what all that meant. Um, he was a successful as a hunter and brought his full share of the game home, which he used uh, as a part of the meat supply of the family and for neighbors and friends. Uh, he enjoyed being in the hills, and uh, whether it was for to get game or whether it was to collect lumber. Um, he brought out the firewood as well as the material for building purposes for his own and for public use. Um, it says all that knew him agreed that Alma was a good provider. He counseled well, and he expected his children to follow his admonitions. Uh, by this means, they worked together in a unit in the labors of the day. Uh, Alma's wife, Lucinda, her life was cut short at a rather early age. She died at 52 of cancer, and uh, there were many people that took her into Logan on almost a daily basis to try to get the help that she needed, but it was to no avail. Uh, she was a devoted companion and mother. Her first concern was always of her children. Um, uh, the, the readings that I did said that life was never the same for Alma uh, after Lucinda passed. Um, he spent some time uh, on the farm and then actually purchased his father's old home in Smithfield, and there he moved and stayed for the remainder of his days, where he spent his time in gardening, caring for flowers, and a small flock of chickens. He died in June of 1928 in the Logan Hospital following a lingering illness. Um, so uh, a, a, a nice study here of uh, faith and uh, conviction and, and honor, I think. Um, as a direct result of Alma and Lucinda and their courage, uh, one cold day in January to drive down to Salt Lake City to, uh, to be sealed uh, for time and eternity, I think they've uh, left an uh, example uh, for all of us on uh, commitment and dedication and uh, of keeping your word and uh, always doing your best. I think that's a great story in and of itself. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Take care.